Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. Today we are looking at Alliant Energy Corporation. In the next five minutes, I will go through how I think about the valuation for this company and whether I think it is a high quality company or not. Let's dive right on in. Today is Alliant Energy, ticker LNT. This is an electric utility company. So that tells us a lot about what kind of business we're in. So it's a utility holding company that provides regulated electricity and natural gas services in the Midwest region of the United States. Regulated is a key word, so there's going to be limits on the returns they're allowed to have. They have three segments, utility electric operations, utility gas operations, and utility other. Um, so it has the subsidiary Interstate Power and Light Company, um, generate and distribute electricity. And so it talks about they supply electric and natural gas service to 490,000 customers, 225,000 customers. And it shows you, talks a little bit about, about some of its generation capacity, natural gas, wind farms, etc. So first thing that I, immediately pops to my eye here is the beta of 0.4137. For a company in the S&P 500, this is very, very low. Um, one would be normal. 0 0.41 means that the volatility is going to be much substantially less than normal. This is probably due to either high dividends and the reliability of an electric utility company. So when we look here, they've lost money in only one year in the last 20 years, and it looks like that was 2005, but otherwise they've had pretty stable returns on invested capital, and since 2010, it's been rock solid at 5.3%, 5.3, 5.2, 5.3, 5.2. This lack of variability is one of the very attractive things about utility companies, but also at 5%, it's quite low. Without the ability to issue debt at low interest rates, there's no return here for investors besides the dividend. It's effective a bond. You're not going to get a lot of equity style growth because the returns on in capital are so low. But low interest rates make this a possibility. So you can see they are using leverage to get the return on equity up to 11%, which is okay. But again, I'd like that to be a 15% number. So I'm already thinking this is a pass. It's pretty common for me to pass on utility companies, but there are some that can be attractive out there. The PE of 22.9, this is probably high, not because they have good growth, but because they pay a high dividend, and we'll get to that later. So you can see the 10-year CAGR on revenue is basically flat. So they're making $3.2 billion in revenue in 2011, and they're at $3.4 billion now. And that's, again, without a high return on capital, you're not going to be able to grow quickly. So they've been able to grow their earnings per share at 6%, despite not growing and that's probably because they've been cutting the returns um they've been cutting the balance sheet down a number of shares so let's see actually shares have grown how is this happening so the shares have gone from 221 million to 248 million um so they have been increasing their shares outstanding over time um they've had a slow growth and they've had a slow growth in revenue but relatively good growth in gross profit operating profit and then net income so net income has still been able to double across the um, decade which is about that seven percent growth we saw um that's interesting so short-term debt let's look at our long-term debt so long-term debt's gone from 2.7 billion to 6.7 billion and so what they're doing here is they're shifting some of that balance sheet which began basically the balance sheet has almost doubled and they've done a lot of this through debt and so you can see out of that, what did I say, $7 billion in debt, and then they're overall about a $14 billion market cap. So now a third of their balance sheet is in debt. That's giving them the leverage to get this return on invested capital from 5% up to a return on equity of 11%. Um, let's go look at dividends, cash flow statement. So... As I expected, they're paying a growing dividend. The dividend's grown from 200 million a year to 400 million a year in the last decade, and that's a big part of their cash flow. So the cash flow from operations has been kind of all over the place, but profitable every year. Um, they're having to put a lot of this money back into acquisitions. It's interesting they call these acquisitions instead of pp and &E. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, um, but they're issuing a lot of debt. They're constantly investing here. You don't have a lot of free cash flow because cash flow from operations going all into investing. Cash flow from operations going all into investing. You can see this repeatedly. They're dumping this money into investing. So the only way they're paying their dividend is by issuing debt. They have to issue the debt in order to go pay those dividends because they've already used up their cash flow in this investing. And that's what's allowing them to continue to improve um, the earnings per share. For me, this is a pass. 
it's really hard to invest in a utility company and be attractive for an investor that's looking for double digit returns because they're capped. The regulated nature of this business makes it hard for them to grow. It makes it hard for them to get a high return on equity. And so there's just a lot of negatives with utility companies. The only way you'd invest in this, if you just really need a high dividend yield, this could be attractive. But for me, it's a pass. And so you can see the dividend is $1.52. It's not even a high dividend yield. I don't know why you don't own this company. I'm going to pass on Alliant Energy. Don't forget to like this video if you learned something. And hit that subscribe button and click the bell in order to get notifications for future videos. Thank you for listening. And until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.